So now we're going to get into the phases of mitosis. And so we're going to first talk about something called interphase. So inter always means, means between, right? So you could think this is happening in between one mitosis event to the next. So interphase on our cell cycle is going to be composed of G1, S, and G2. So you can see it's actually written along the outside here. So G1, S, and G2 is all interphase. It's basically preparation for mitosis, okay? So <clears throat> what happens in interphase? Cells gonna grow, as we were talking about. Um, organelles are going to be produced. And then DNA is going to be replicated. Now, after the DNA has replicated, what's going to happen during G2 is that they're going to start to condense. So the DNA just looks like a ball of yarn, like all kind of spread throughout everywhere. And at the end of G2, it's actually going to condense into those chromosomes that we were talking about before. Now, what's also going to happen is there's going to be something called a kinetochore. Um, and so the kinetochores are going to be on either side of the chromosome, and I think I've got a picture of that. Yeah, so here's our chromosome right here, and you've got this kinetochore, which is going to be like this disk of protein, okay? What's going to be important about that is that there are going to be these things called microtubules, which you've heard of at this point, and those are going to act like um, strings on a puppet, and so they're going to actually move those um, chromosomes around during the phases of mitosis. All right. So now we've got um, a couple of other things that are going to be happening. The centrioles are going to replicate, and the reason for that is because they want to make more microtubules, right, so that this whole process can happen. All right, first phase is going to be what's called prophase. So if we look at a picture of prophase, here we go. This is actually really good, these pictures here. So let's look at what's happening here. Um, we've got our centrioles, right? And as you can see, they're kind of moving to one side of the cell or the other, and they're leaving a trail of microtubules. That's important, okay? Another thing that you want to notice is our chromosomes have condensed, and the nuclear envelope here is starting to dissolve. The reason it's starting to dissolve is because the chromosomes need move, room to move around wherever they're going to go, okay? So that's going to be what happens in prophase. Now, um, I am definitely going to, at some point, ask you to draw me the phases of mitosis. So when I'm asking you to draw me prophase, this is what I'm looking for. So I'll write up here, if you were going to draw prophase, you've got your cell, you've got a couple of chromosomes in here, we'll just do three, and then you're going to draw a dotted line around to show that the nuclear envelope is dissolving. Okay, so that's going to be prophase. All right, then we've got metaphase. That's the next step. In metaphase, what's going to happen? Think meta, middle. So all of them are going to arrange down the center of the cell. See here? So you've got all of them arranged down the center of the cell. How do they get there? What's going to happen is you're going to have these microtubules on either side. You see how it's attached to either side, and it's going to move them around. So they can all get in a line right down the middle. So metaphase, middle. Now, if I was going to ask you to draw metaphase, this is how it would look. So let me clear this. Woo! What did I just do? I swear, I am not good at technology. Okay. <laughs> got it. All right. So the next phase is metaphase. And so what's going to happen with that is you're going to have those chromosomes just lined up down the center. That's all you got to draw for metaphase. Okay? Then our next one is going to be anaphase. So what's going to happen here is the centromeres are going to divide. So you've got those two that are held together. Now they're going to start to split apart and get pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. Okay, so let's look at the picture here. You can see now that little orange one, purple one, red one, the blue one, they've all been split apart and they're going to opposite sides of the cell. So you can see those microtubules are pulling them to the other sides of the cell. So if you were going to draw anaphase, let's do that. Alrighty, clear, we're going to write, sorry, that's the messiest writing ever. All right, anaphase, here's our cell. What's going to happen is you're just going to go like this. And so that's going to be your um, sister chromatids getting pulled apart from one another. Okay, very, very simple. 
Alrighty, then the last phase that we're going to talk about is going to be telophase. So telophase, what's going to happen is the spindle apparatus that's going to be those microtubules is going to start to break down because they're in the location they need to be. Nuclear envelope is starting to reform and now the chromosomes can uncoil. Okay, if we look at our picture here on the PowerPoint, you can see right here the cell's gotten longer and you can see the sister chromatids are in their special spots and the nuclear envelope is reforming. Now you can see it's starting to pinch, but it has not actually split because that's the last part called cytokinesis. So if we're going to draw telophase, that's going to look like this. Um, okay. Telophase. <clears throat> so now we've going, I'm just going to draw it so it's longer like that. And I'm going to draw my nuclear envelope reforming. And then I've got my sister chromatids here, like that. Okay? So that's going to be telophase. So then the last phase is going to be cytokinesis. And cytokinesis is where the cell actually is going to split. Now, depending on what type of cell it is, it's going to do it a different way. Animal cells are really soft, right? So what's going to happen is there's just going to be this thing called a cleavage furrow where it's just going to kind of pinch and eventually split into two. Now, in plant cells, they have a cell wall, so it's going to look a little different, and I'll show you a picture of all these. Okay, there we go. So in animal cells, you can see that cleavage furrow starting, and what's going to happen is it eventually just kind of um, pulls into, kind of cinches into two. So it's very, very simple. In uh, plant cells, what happens is they have that cell wall. So it's going to actually happen from the inside going outwards. And so they'll actually form these little vesicles, which will eventually fuse together and form a cell plate. That will eventually extend to form a new cell wall, and now you have the two separate cells. So animal cells are going to go from the outside in. Plant cells are going to go from the inside out. And then the last one that I just have listed in your notes is going to be um, what happens in, proto or in yeah, protists and fungus. So protists are going to be things like amoeba and you know, paramecium and a lot of those things you've seen zooming around in the lab. Um, and then fungi is going to be mushrooms, molds, those types of things. And so what happens with these guys is mitosis happens completely within the nucleus, then the nucleus splits, and then the cell splits. So just a little bit of a different mechanism of how that works. So that's going to be the phases of mitosis. In the next video, we're going to talk about that cell cycle and how things can kind of get past checkpoints and those types of things.